Greetings everyone, once again is Martin sharing the authentic truth brought to us by Zulu Lassan, the only teacher. So before I begin, I would like to thank Luba, the unique and only true creator to have allowed us by the manifestation of his grace to know the truth, to know his verb by through his mysterious second son, Zulu Lassan. So today we are going to be sharing a teaching given by Zulu Lassan regarding Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is not the Lamb of God and is the biblical, biblical proof in even in the current day Bible, the proof that that Jesus Christ is not the Lamb of God. Because there's currently a lot of people, a lot of black people even, in the, in the worship, who are worshipping Jesus Christ, who are worshipping this personage, that fabricated, invented person. And they base their belief in the current day Bibles. So we are going to dive into their current day Bibles to show them, to demonstrate that Jesus Christ, even according to their own Bible they accept, is not the Lamb of God. So, and also that he's not known on the other side, meaning in heaven. He was never, he is never, and he will never be the Lamb of God. <clears throat> and the Lamb in Revelation has nothing to do with Jesus. Jesus is a fictional character. He was made up. He is an invention. It's demons that are behind that personage. The Trinity doesn't exist. The Son, the Holy Spirit, the Father, all those these notions is false. It doesn't exist. It doesn't add up. Even though he says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 9, that uh, let this mind you, which was also in Christ, Jesus, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equally with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being like, being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance of is in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to death so in this verse a lot of christian are going to take this verse and to try to demonstrate to try to prove to try to show that no jesus had an existence a previous existence in heaven before he came to earth even in the classical bible but we are going to show other verse in the bibles that contradict that so in philippian <clears throat> in the classical bible you we can go in colossian colossian chapter 1 verse 16 in the english standard version it's according to uh, according to the current day Bible, is by Paul, Paul of Tarsus. He says this, For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether throne or domination, or whether throne or dominion, or ruler or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. So according to the current day Bible in Colossians, Chapter 1, verse 16, by this so-called Paul, he says that in him, so in that Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, and all things were created through him and for him. And we are going to show proof that this verse doesn't add up. These are the classical, the current day classical Bibles full of mistakes and contradiction. <clears throat> We can, for that, to prove, with the biblical proof, that this verse doesn't hold up, that that Jesus, not only things were not created for him because he's an invention, he's a made-up, he's a fictional character, 
It's like, uh, for example, those Marvel superheroes or so-called superheroes, you know, like uh, like Iron Man or, or Thor, is a fictional character, is an invention. And a lot of people are worshipping him without knowing that he didn't even exist, just simply because people have written false translations of books. Now people are worshipping and accepting everything uh, they are telling them, even though he was made up. It was a lie. And he was, he was forced. He was force-fed. It was through war that his story was spread. And they forced some ancestors, even some black people, to accept this, this fictional character with images. <clears throat> we have to know that the true Christ did exist. There's a key difference between the true Christ and this fictional character of Jesus Christ, which is a false Christ, like we've previously demonstrated. So, in Colossians, like I've said, chapter 1, verse 16, according to the current day Bible, it says that all things were created for that fake fictional character, Jesus. But in Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 9, Nehemiah, in the Berean Study Bible, says this, You alone, the Lord... You created the heaven, comma, the highest heavens with all their host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to all things, and the host of heavens, and the host of heaven worships you. So here, even in the current day Bible, that the so-called Christian accept. It says that you alone the Lord, so the Lord in other versions is say Jehovah or Yahweh and so on. You alone the Lord. Alone means you yourself alone. That means nobody else. You created the heaven, the highest heavens with all their hosts, the earth, the earth and all that is on it. Nowhere in this verse, in this passage, it is mentioned that Jesus, that fake fictional character that was made up, that so many people believe in and worship, nowhere in this verse it is mentioned that Jesus was also a part, in the, had a part in the making of the creation, in creating. It's you alone, the Lord. In other verse it says God. In other verse, in other version it says uh, Jehovah or Yahweh and so on. You alone. So even the current day Bible that, the, that these scholars, so-called Bible scholars accept, that the so-called Christian accept, that the so-called pastors accept, he says, you alone the Lord. Now they're going to try to debate. They're going to say, no, the Lord, it's also Jesus, that the Trinity, and so on. But they, he, they, here there's no mention of Trinity. It's you alone. In other verse in the Bibles, he says he created through his will or the Lord created through his uh, word. Nowhere he mentioned that no, he created through Jesus. It's not mentioned. So Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 is false, is wrong. It's something fake made up once again that these, um, that these people that who have written the, the current day Bibles got wrong once again because they were not mandated to write those bibles they were not alimented they were not in they were not with the holy spirit so some fake pastor will, will claim that jesus had a divinity before coming to earth so they will try to make believe they'll try to say that to people that know Jesus existed before he came on earth and that Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus didn't believe, did not exist before he came on earth and he never came on earth because he never existed. And he also, even according to the current Bible, is not the Lamb of God. So why did John the Bat Baptist says in the current Bible that look, the Lamb of God when and when referring to that Jesus. <clears throat> For that, we're also going to go in Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. 
he says this, Jesus entered. So even according to the Korean Bible, that Jesus says, Jesus entered. Don't you know, in the beginning, the creator made a man and a woman? Question mark. New International Version. Haven't you heard, he replied, so that, that Jesus, that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female. Not now, if some so-called pastors or so-called Christian will say that, okay, when it is mentioned in Nehemiah, that the Lord made heaven and earth. So that was also Jesus. Now, why did then in Matthew chapter 19, verse 4, when Jesus himself, according to the current day Bible, was speaking, he says, don't you know in the beginning, the creator. So he didn't say me. He says, he didn't say me and him. He didn't say him through me. He said the creator made. He made. That's the third person. That's somebody else. That the creator made a man and a woman. Haven't you heard? He replied that at the beginning, the creator, the creator made them male and female. Not the creator and me. Not me and the creator. Not through me. No. He said the creator. That means it's somebody else. That means it's the Lord that in Nehemiah, according to the current day Bible, created alone. It's that creator that he's referring to. So he himself didn't say that he created. So where does that notion come in where people are believing that no, Jesus is God and that so-called everything was created for him and through him? You see, already there's confusion in the current day Bible, in the mind of the Christian, in the mind of the fake pastors. They don't know what, they don't even know what they're believing. They don't know the scriptures. They don't know the text. You have to sit down and let the only mandate teacher, Zula San, teach you because he's the one who knows the truth. <clears throat> so these fake pastors, they will so try to cite verse. They'll try to say, no, this verse, this verse, and so on. Verses that they don't even understand. Scriptures, texts that they don't even know the origin, but they don't even understand that they don't even know how to read. They will take, for example, John chapter 10, verse 30. That says, <clears throat> that says, I and the Father are one. They'll try to cite that verse in John 10, in John 10, 30, that says, me and the Father, or I and the Father are one. In the King James Version, I and my Father are one. English Standard Version, I and the Father are one. So they'll try to take this verse without even understanding and try to say, no, you see, he says, I and the Father I one are one. That means is also God is also the creator. But they don't know other version of the Bible. They don't they don't know all the verse. They don't know the the circumstances. That's why we have to understand. We have to go in other versions of the Bible. We are going to go in the Amplified Bible. It says this in John chapter ten verse thirty. I and my father, no, I and the father are one. And then in bracket, it says, in essence and in nature. Already in the Amplified Bible, it precise, is precising in which sense they are one. It says here, in essence and in nature. So other people will try to argument, to try to debate, say in essence and nature, that means that they are one. No. In the Amplified Bible says, in essence and in nature. But let's go in the Lamsa Bible. In the Lamsa Bible, in John chapter 10, verse 30, it says this. I and my father are one in accord. In the Lamsa Bible, it says this. I and my father are one in accord. And not me and my father are one but are one in accord. So they are in the same accordance according to the Lamsa Bible. So you see that these pastors, they don't know all the version of the Bible. They only stop 
where it suits them. But they're not reading other versions. They're not understanding other versions. They're not understanding the context of what they're reading. And in the translation Bible de l'Epée, that's a French Bible, it says this, Me and the Father, we are indivisible and divisible. In Bible de l'Epée, me and the Father, we are indivisible. So it's no longer me and the Father are one. It's now indivisible. Isn't it the same Jesus, according to the current day Bible, that says to his followers, to his disciples, to his apostles, that I have given you the glory so that you could be one also? So that you could be one? So does that mean that by being one, they are all one person? No. That's why you have to understand in the Amplified Bible it says, in essence and nature, in the Lamsa Bible it says, we are all one in accord. In the Bible de la Paix, me and the Father, we are indivisible. So, this Christian, this fake Christian out there, who goes in churches, in Sundays and so on, who are saying that name Jesus, and thinking by that saying that name, he has power. That name had holds no power, has no power. It's a fake name. It was made up. That person is that fictional character was made up. Do you st also still believe in Santa Claus? Because it's the same. It's the same principle. It's the same thing. It was made up. So these Christians are in delusion. These pastors and so on. Because if you, we go in one John. Chapter 4, verse 12, in the New International Version, even still in the current day Bible, it says this. No one has ever seen God. So, it says here, no one has ever seen God. Wasn't John the Apostle? Didn't John, according to the current day Bible, also receive the Spirit at that point? Because in 1 John, chapter 4, verse 12, that's when the Christ, um, the, that fake Jesus, according to the current day Bible, well, were already was already gone. He already received the Holy Spirit, John. So with the Spirit, he says, according to the current day Bible, no one has ever seen God. And John saw Jesus, according to the current day Bible. So if he saw Jesus, and he, he says no one has ever seen God, that means Jesus is not God. You see, these pastors, these fake pastors out there, these Christians, they're not going to look, they're not going to understand. They're only going to pick and choose what suits them in their delusion to try to make them still believe, to try to persuade themselves that they are in the truth, that know that Jesus uh, did exist. He did not exist. He was made up. He was invented. He was, he was made up. <clears throat> we you go in one king's. 1 Kings 22, verse 19. He says, Then Micaiah continued, Listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting in his throne, in his throne, with all the armies of heavens around him, on his right and on his left. So already you see in the current day Bible's confusion. But here, if for the fake Christian out there who worship, who call that name Jesus, who says that Jesus had a divinity or did exist in heaven before coming to earth, then where is his presence in the what they call the ancient, the Old Testament in 1 King 22.19? Because in 1 King twenty two nineteen he says then Micaiah continued and said listen to continued listen to what the Lord says I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heaven around him and we have to note that in here it's not mentioned that Jesus was there once again Jesus is nowhere to be found in this verse because he says the Lord was sitting on his throne so according to the current day Bible, that's the God is sitting on his throne, that Lord of the Bible, that Jehovah and so on. 
and with all the armies, all the armies of heaven around him, on his right and on his left. When he says around him in the New Living Translation, that means all around. So that means around him. Now, Malkia didn't say here that he also saw Jesus or that he saw the, the Lord and Jesus because Jesus didn't exist. He doesn't have a presence in heaven. Where is Jesus at this point? Where is he to, where is he to be found? <clears throat> in the New King James Version, is still in 1 Kings 22 verse 19. Then Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. So all, when he says all, and the whole, in, the, in New King James Version it says, and the host of heaven, all the host of heaven. That means all. So that's all the, the armies of heaven, all the creatures, all in heaven, were on his right and on his left. And that Jesus is not there. In the Christian Standard Bar Bible, Christian Standard Bible, still in the same verse, then Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and the whole heavenly army was standing by him at his right and at his left end. And in people will claim that before Jesus come, came on earth, he was the Father. That's not written. That's not written. Stop your nonsense. Come out of your delusion. Stop living in delusion, in sensationalism. In Bible de Jerusalem, that's a French Bible, it says this, Micaiah continued, Listen rather to the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh seated on his throne, all the hosts of heaven stood before him. All the hosts of heaven stood before him on his right and on his left. So, nowhere again that Jesus is to be found. And in Bible, Pirot Clamer, Pirot Clamer, that's a French Bible, it says this. Then Micaiah said, well, hear the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting on the throne. And all the hosts of heaven stood around him to his right and to his left. So, once again, he says here, around him. Around him. And not around them. Because if Jesus and the Father were one, that means there are two, or there is the notion of a trinity, then he should say, we're sitting around them. But he says, no, around him. So, one person. You see? Other people are going to try to say, no, we are um, trying to play with words. No, that's how it's written. You are the one who are not understanding the text, who are not understanding the words. Around him and not around them. Because Jesus is not there, is not in heaven. He doesn't exist. So the prophets of what they call the Old Testament didn't attest didn't say, didn't mention, didn't saw that Jesus. They saw the Lord. They saw Yahweh. They saw the, the heavens armies all around him. But they saw the God as well of the current day Bible because he can be seen. Even though in 1 John 4, 12, he says that no one has ever seen God. So already there's confusion, delusion within their own writing. But even then, that Jesus is not there. So that's the testimony. Testimony of the prophets of the current day classical Bible as well. So, in Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 to 3. It says this, After this I looked and saw a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I had previously 
previously heard speak to me like a trumpet was saying, come up here and I will show you what must happen after this thing. At once I was in the spirit and I saw a throne. <clears throat> so first in the first verse, he says this. And the voice I had previously heard speak to me like a trumpet was saying. And that voice, other people will try to claim that the person that was speaking to John or the entity that appeared or the angel that appeared wasn't an angel, but it was Jesus. It wasn't Jesus. Even according to the current day Bible, it was the angel that appeared to John and not Jesus. Verse 2, at once I was in the spirit and I saw a throne standing in heaven with someone seated on it. Verse 3, the one seated there looked like Jasper and Carnelian and a rainbow that gleamed like, a, like an emerald and circled the throne. So, that, it's an angel that, that shown John. And here, in the current day Bible, in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, the person that's sitting on the throne according to the Bibles, the current day Bibles, it's the God. It's that God of the Bible. It's God. So that God is sitting on the throne. And Jesus is not there. For that, we also go in Exodus chapter 24, verse 9 to 10. Then Moses went up with Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was a work like a pavement made of sapphire, as clear as the sky itself. So, in Exodus chapter 20, 24, verse 9 to 10, it's also that God that was sitting. So when he's sitting somewhere, and they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was a work like pavement, a so sapphire clear as the, sky, as the sky. So that God as well, who was seen in Exodus 24 is the same God that was seen in Revelation. It's about the same description. It's what is described in Revelation. In Revelation 4.4, 4, surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and, and on this throne sat 24 elders dressed in white with golden crown on their heads. So surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones. So surrounding the throne, one throne, were 24 other thrones. Where is that Jesus at this point? Where is he? Where is his throne in all this? Because in other version they will say, no, he went up in heaven and sat at the right hand of God. In some biblical text. Well, when we go in Revelation, on the right hand and left of that God is all the armies, the heaven's armies, and Jesus is nowhere to be found. And in Revelation 4.4, 4, you're, you're shown, your, he says, that around the throne, surrounding the throne, were 24 other thrones. And on this throne sat 24 elders. So the elders are there, but the Jesus is not. Verse 5. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumbling and peals, peals of thunder. Before the throne burned seven torches of fire. These are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne was something like a sea of glass as clear as crystal, in the center around the throne were four living creatures. So in the center around the throne were 
four living creatures covered with eyes in front and back. The first living creatures creature was like a lion, the second like a calf, and the third had a face like a man. And the fourth was like an eagle in, fight, in flight. And each of the four living creatures had six wings. So those creatures with six wings, those are seraphim. And was covered with eyes all around and within. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So, according to the current day Bible, they were referring to that person that was that God, according to the current day Bible, that was sitting on the throne. So, the throne was there. Around the throne were 24 elders. Were 24 thrones with elders sitting. And from the throne, there's flashes of lightning, rumblings. And before the thrones, burn seven torches of fire. Those are the seven spirits of God. So the seven spirits are mentioned. The elders are mentioned. The throne is mentioned. The person sitting on the throne. And before the throne was something like a sea of glass, clear like crystal. So like it was seen in the ancient testament, according to the current day Bible. What they call and in the center and around the throne were four living creatures covered with eyes. So those creatures were also described, were also shown, mentioned. But there's not a trace of that Jesus. There's not a trace because it, didn't, it doesn't exist. He's an usurper. He was made up. He has no origin in heaven even before, or present, or in the future. He was never, is not, and will never be. Because he was made up. He's a fake God. He doesn't exist. And those creatures were addressing the personage that was on the throne. So that person was God according to the current day Bible. In Isaiah, and we can see that as well in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 2. In the year that King Hosea died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne. I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood seraphim. So the seraphim are the same that we saw in Revelation. That are described. Each have having six wings. You see that's how we recognize them. With two wings covering their face. With two they're, they cover their feet. And with two they were flying. And they were calling out to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is full of his glory. So it's the same vision. It's the same representation. That Isaiah According to the current day Bible, saw, saw God, saw the Lord, saw Jehovah. And that was before that Jesus, according to the current day Bible, so called those, or the so called Christian, they said came on earth. So Isaiah didn't see him when he saw the vision because other people will say, no, he was on the throne there by God before he came on earth. Well, Isaiah saw the throne, didn't saw Jesus. Or they will claim, no, he was one with the Lord, or he's one. But no, because if there were one, that means there are two in total. But he saw one person sitting on a throne. He saw the armies of heaven around him and not around them. So there's already a clear distinction, a clear precision that it's around him, one person. So he wasn't with the Father. And he wasn't near him. He wasn't in the heaven. Now, in Revelation, also John saw the same thing. And he didn't see Jesus in there. He says he saw the Lord. And he didn't say he saw the Lord Jesus. 
or Esau, the Lord Jesus and the Father, and or the Lord and Jehovah. You see, because he has no origin on the other side. In the Aramaic Bible, in plain English, it says this. In the year that Uzziah the king died, I saw the Lord Jehovah sitting on a throne, high and exalted. So it says here the Lord Jehovah and not the Lord Jesus. Where is Jesus in there? Where is his trace? Revelation chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. And whether, whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to the one sitting on the throne, so to the one, one, to the one, so that means one person was sitting on the throne. The one seated on the throne who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before the one seated on the throne, and they worship, they worshiped him. They worshipped him and not they worshipped them. So where does it come from that these fake Christians out there are worshipping the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? They're worshipping a trinity. They're worshipping multiple people. Because they're in confusion. They have many gods. They're, that's paganism. That's what it is. When, according to their own, their own Bible, they accept. It says here that the 24 elders fall down before the one, before the one seated on the throne, the one, and they worshiped him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crown before the throne saying, worthy are you, are you our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power for you, you. So to the one create seated on the throne. You created all things and your will and <clears throat> you created all things by your, your will, by your will, they exist and came to be by your will and not by your will and the will of Jesus and not by your will and through Jesus. You see, even the 24 elders, according to the current day Bible, testified that it's only God that created and that Jesus is nowhere to be found in the creation. He didn't participate in the creation. And they didn't worship Jesus. Where and when did these elders saw that fake Jesus? At which moment? Or at which, at which moment did they worship him? You see? So according to the current day Bible, those elders worship God. That personage that they saw on the throne. The one. And they say you created. The one. So there's no notion of Trinity or other things. So that's already the proof, the biblical proof. That that Jesus has no presence in heaven. He has none. Because he was made up. He, do, he doesn't exist. Now other people claim that no. That Jesus is the Lamb of God. Well in Revelation chapter 5 verse 1 to 5. It says this. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne. A scroll with writings on both sides. And sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. <clears throat> I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll and look inside. So once again, you see here in the current day Bible, the confusion, he, he wept and wept. So we know crying, that's human emotion, that's man, that's the flesh. So how John, who was in the spirit, start to weep, start to cry. But nevertheless, confusion of the, of the current day Bibles again. 
verse 5. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and the seventh seal. And now the Christians are going to hold on to that passage and say, You see, the lion of the tribe of Judah. That means it's, it's, that's the Jesus. The root of David, that's Jesus. According to them, that's, the, that's what they will say. That's what they will claim. But, for your information, even according to the current day Bible, Jesus is not the lion of the tribe of Judah. Or the root of David. Because Jesus doesn't come from Judah. From the tribe of Judah. Because Jesus, according to the current day Bible, he was born from Mary. And Mary and also her Mary was a Levite. So Mary and her cousin, they were Levite. And we know the person that was from David it was Joseph. But Joseph wasn't the father of Jesus according to the current day Bible as well. So if Joseph, who was from David, had no part in, is not the father of the Jesus, how then is that Jesus from the tribe of Judah? Because he's born from his mother. So he's taken the tribe of his mother and his mother was a Levite because her cousin was also a Levite. So you see, when they say that the lion of the tribe of Judah, first of all, the lion of the tribe of Judah is Judah himself. He's the lion. For that proof, we go in Genesis chapter 49, verse 9. In the New Living Translation, it says this. Judah, my son, is a long lion that has finished eating his prey. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down. Who dares to rouse him? So, in Genesis 49.9, the lion is Judah himself. In the Christian Standard Bible, Judah is, a long, Judah is a young lion. My son, you return from the kill. You see? So, in Revelation, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah, according to the current day Bible, is Judah himself. The root of David, that Jesus is not from David, is not from Judah. In Genesis 49.9, <clears throat> proves that. Joseph is the stepfather, and he's the one who's from Judah, from David. Mary, she's from the Levites, and Joseph is not the father. So, there's already confusion in the tribes, and... That's how you see this Christian. They'll say, no, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the son of David. From where? From which, from which direction? From which lineage? Where? Where? That Jesus doesn't exist. He was made up. He's not the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's not the, he's, according to the current day Bible, he's from Levite. You see? You see? So, even if they say it in Revelation, that no, it's the lion of the tribe of Judah, that's lies, it's confusion, cheating, contradiction. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 6, it says this, Then I saw a lamb looking as if he had been slain standing at the center of the throne and circled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirit of God sent out into all the earth. Now, all the fake pastors out there, all the Christian, sit down, sit down and listen. What is slain mean? Slain mean to kill. 
To kill by violence. To kill by violence. In Revelation 5, 6, in the we mouth New Testament, it says this, Then midday, between the throne and the four living creatures, I saw a lamb standing among the elders. He looked, he looked as if he had been offered in sacrifice, and he had seven horns. So he looked as if he had been offered in sacrifice. So, where in the current day Bible, when those Romans, according to the current day Bible, killed them, how did they kill them for sacrifice? That, that Jesus. Because other people will try to say that the lamb that they saw in Revelation is that Jesus. Well, you're told, you're told that he was offered in sacrifice. And that Jesus, the Romans, when they killed him, it was to get rid of him. It wasn't as an offering for their God. Or was it? And how was he killed? Because slain is to kill by violence. How was that Jesus killed? For that we go in the International Standard Version in Revelation chapter 5 verse 6. Then I saw a lamb standing in the middle of the throne, the four living creatures and the elders. He looked like he had been slaughtered. He looked like he had been slaughtered. What is slaughtered? Slaughtered is like the when the butcher slaughtered an animal. That's when he kill, he cut his throat, slit his throat. You see, that's, that's what the slaughter is. And for that precision, we also see that in Bible des Peuples, it's a French translation. It's a French Bible. In Bible des Peuples, he says this. Then I saw a lamb that looked as if he had been slit by the throat. He stood between the throne and the four living creatures. So... According to the current day Bible, that lamb was slit by the throat, looked like he had been slit by the throat. He was slaughtered. He was slain. Show me the verse, the passage in the current day Bible where it shows that that Jesus was murdered in that way, was murdered by the slit of the throat, was slaughtered like a butcher and or was Put as a sacrifice. Show a verse in the current classical Bible. So, all of you fake pastors out there, or Christian, so called Christian, so called believers, show the verse. Here, Zulassan defy the whole world. So we defy the whole world to do so. To show the proof. Where was Jesus killed by slaughter, by the slit of the throat? By the cutting of the throat like a, like a butcher does. Show us that verse. That's how you see that you Christian, you fake pastors out there, you fake believers, you don't master the scriptures. And you want to fight who? You want to fight Zulu Lassan, the only teacher who has the knowledge, who is the knowledge, the only teacher? You cannot sit down and listen. So, when that Jesus was killed, it wasn't for sacrifice, even ac according to the current day Bible. And he wasn't ki killed by the slit of the throat, like Dalem was in Revelation 5, 6. So, that lamb has nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing to do with Jesus. Because they were not killed in the same manner. So, in Je who then is that lamb? What does that lamb represent? We see that in Genesis chapter 4 verse 6. Genesis 4 verse 6. In New Living Translation. He says this, Abel, 
also brought a gift, the best portion of the firstborn lambs of his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift. So here, according to the current day Bible in the New Living Translation in Genesis chapter 4 verse 6, Abel brought a gift. He brought a sacrifice. And that sacrifice was of the firstborn lambs. Those, that's that animal. That was the representation in Revelation. It was that lamb. Because when he brought us the best portion of the firstborn, what is the best portion? How do you get the best portion? How do you know which one is the best portion? So when he brought the best portions, that means he cut them. He cut the lamb. He cut the lambs. You see? So he slaughtered the lambs first and then cut and then presented as a sacrifice. So show me the verse where Jesus, if he's so-called the Lamb of God in Revelation, where was it cut into pieces and presented as an offering? As a sacrifice. You see? In Genesis verse in Genesis chapter 22, verse 7 and 8, New International Version says this. Isaiah spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father. Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are there, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? So you see the burnt offering, that's the sacrifice. And so the burnt offering, you had to, according to the current day Bible, take the animal, slit the throat, kill it, and burn it. That was the way. So where was it in, uh, in the current day Bible where Jesus was presented in that way? Was it killed and burned and presented as an offering? Because that's what the sacrifice is in Genesis 22. Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Verse 8, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. So here, you're going to see something. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb. Abraham will provide, no, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. So what is a lamb? A lamb is a young sheep, male. So is the cub of the sheep, of the sheep and the ram. The ram is the male, the sheep is the female. The ewe, the ewe or the ewe, e w e lamb, definition is a young female sheep. So, Genesis 22 13, the lamb is a young cub. It's a young cub. Genesis 22 13. Abram looked up and there in the ticket he saw a ram cut by his horn. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So here in Genesis 22 13, Abram didn't sacrifice a young lamb. Because the lamb is the cub, is the young. But in Genesis 22, 13, it was a ram. So he was a male and he was an adult. When the Christian will say, Jesus is the lamb of God. They don't say is the ram of God. You see? It's not the, the, the lamb and the ram is two different things. The lamb is the young when he becomes an adult with the horn and so on, he take assurance, that's when he becomes the ram. In Revelation, it doesn't say here they saw the ram of God slaughtered or standing as slain. No, they said the lamb 
not the RAM. So there's a clear distinction. Other reclaim that note in Genesis 22:13 that a RAM represented Jesus. No, not at all. Nonsense. It's not a lamp. It's a difference. It's not the same. There's a precision here. In verse 14 in Genesis 22, Abraham named the place Yahweh Hayer, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use the name as a proverb on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. So, you see, you see, because they tried to falsify the scriptures, they tried to change the text, because Satan is behind that fake Jesus. And then, he saw that more and more people were worshipping that fake Jesus. And, That's why you see the confusion in the Bible. Because Satan also brought up the confusion in there also so that the people who worship him. You see? So the Lord will be provided. The Lord, it will be provided. So which one will be provided? The ram. The ram. And it was made sure that that ram stood there. And not the lamb. A ram that was provided. And not the lamb. Because the lamb, it was Abel. And it was that lamb in Revelation that was represented. In Revelation chapter 21 verse 9, New International Version. On one of the seven angels who had seven bowls full of the seven last plague came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. You see, you see, I will show you the bride, the bride, the wife of the lamb. <laughs> now the lamb, they'll claim, no, no, the lamb, the disbelievers will say that they are the wife of the lamb. And we know that the lamb is a young, is a young sheep. So you see. The bride, so they're getting married. So that's zoophilia. That's what it is. That's zoophilia. Because it's not even a ram, but it's a young, so it's an animal. So these believers, these fake believers out there, these Christian, they're getting married with an animal, with a lamb. That's zoophilia. They are with a young animal. They are betrothed to a young animal. You see? Zoophilia. So, what's, what's going on? Which type of doctrine are these Christians accepting? Deprived of logic, deprived of sense, deprived of spiritual basis, deprived of spiritual substance. So, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 5 to 6, then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. So that's Satan and that fake Jesus according to the current day Bible. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. 
throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angel concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And when you read this passage, it has nothing to do with Jesus. The prophecy does not concern Jesus. They'll say, no, uh, why didn't he throw himself then, that Jesus? Because he knew that if he threw himself, he would have died. <laughs> Because he has no power. He doesn't exist. He was made up. You see? Other people will say, no, the devil came to tempt, to test To test, uh, to test Jesus. Well, even according to the classical Bible, the prophets, when a spirit was appearing to them, sometimes they ask questions. They ask, show me the proof. Make this shadow move. Do this so that I know that it is you. They were, they were verifying to make sure. So in John 1:29, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the words. You see, that was made up. Nonsense. If that's John the Baptist, right? He says this in John. 129 so that's in the beginning he saw jesus and said look that's the lamb of god so the christians are going to take this and go with it but in luke 720 new international version when the men came to jesus they said john the baptist send us send us to you to ask are you the one who is to come Or should we expect somebody else? You see? Because even John the Baptist, even according to the Korean Day Bible, realized that, no, that, <laughs> that person I saw couldn't have been the lamb. <laughs> wow, <laughs> the confusion. The confusion. <laughs> The confusion is real. Wow. These Bibles. <coughs> okay. <coughs> It says here. Are you the one who is to come? So he realized as well. That no. In the previous. In Genesis. It wasn't a lamb. It was a ram. So when I say, look, that's the Lamb of God, I was confused. <laughs> you see, these Bibles, these crazy Bibles have so much confusion, contradiction. But they themselves also testify that that Jesus had no existence previously in heaven, is nowhere to be seen. The prophets didn't see him in heaven. Even according to the scholars, like we saw Isaiah didn't see him. And so on. Moses and Nadab and so on. And the, the, the seven and the elders. And on the throne, it was only that, that God. So, all these fake believers out there, all these Christians, Jesus was never in heaven, is not in heaven, and will never be. He never existed, he doesn't exist, and will never exist. He was made up. He's a fictional character. All of you keep believing in that lie, you are all lost. There's only one teacher, Zulassan, one truth, 
that is brought to us by Zulu Lassan. One creator, Loba, and all glory to Loba.